Here we'll learn about gas exchange in the lungs, which occurs in the respiratory portion of the lungs. Start a table so we can review the functional divisions of the respiratory system. To note that the respiratory system divides into a conducting portion, the air passage conduit, which air passes through it, and the respiratory portion, which is the interface of oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange. It's the site of gas exchange. So now let's draw an overview of the respiratory tract. Begin with the conducting portion. Draw a trachea. Show it branch into left and right bronchi, which descend into the left and right lungs, respectively. Show that within the lungs, the bronchi branch into bronchioles. Multiple bronchiole subtypes exist. We'll only cover one here. Next, draw the respiratory portion. Draw a respiratory bronchiole. Note that this is not to scale. Show it branch into a grape-like sac of alveoli, which has a large surface area for gas exchange. For completeness, indicate the thin-walled alveolar ducts, which bridge bronchioles to alveolar sacs. We don't actually draw them, though, for simplicity. Show smooth muscle in the respiratory bronchial wall, which, via its contractility, governs airflow into the alveolar sacs show a dense network of capillaries envelop the alveolar sac, which maximize its surface area and gas exchange efficiency. Now let's focus on an alveolar sac, the functional unit of the lung. Denote that each alveolus comprises the following specialized cells. Type 1 cells, which are the most abundant and form alveolar walls. Type 2 cells, which despite constituting only 5% of the alveolar surface are still essential because they secrete surfactant. Alveolar macrophages, which clear debris. Draw a small portion of an alveolar sac in cross-section so we can illustrate the cellular organization of alveoli. Show that the inner wall comprises a single layer of type 1 cells, which are very thin epithelial cells. Oxygen and carbon dioxide easily diffuse across them. Illustrate a type 2 cell. Sparsely distributed type 2 cells secrete a layer of surfactant, a fluid rich in lipids and proteins. Show that surfactant covers type 1 cells. It reduces surface tension so the alveoli don't collapse upon expiration. Denote that water produces surface tension via its cohesive properties, which arise from its tendency to maximize the number of hydrogen bonds. So denote that without surfactant, alveoli exhibit more surface tension and collapse. As an important clinical correlation, denote that newborn respiratory distress syndrome occurs when a baby is born prematurely, before the lungs can produce surfactant. This causes an increase in alveolar surface tension, and the alveoli collapse on it expiration. Thus, these newborns are treated with surfactant replacement until their type 2 cells produce surfactant themselves. Now indicate that macrophages circulate within the alveolar lumen to clean up debris and perform immune functions. Next, show that the interstitial fluid bays the alveolus and the capillaries that surround it. We'll show the capillaries soon. Then draw elastin fibers within the interstitial fluid, which assist in pulmonary elastic recoil and the efficient expiration of air. So now let's illustrate how gas exchange occurs across the respiratory portion of the lungs. Denote that diffusion describes the movement of solutes, in this case carbon dioxide and oxygen, along their concentration gradient. Thus, concentration gradients, which differ in the lungs and the peripheral tissues, determine direction of diffusion. Show a capillary next to the alveolar walls. We only draw a single one for the sake of clarity. Below this, draw a heart, which we'll use to visualize pulmonary circulation. Show that the heart delivers deoxygenated blood in blue to the lung capillary via the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries are the only arteries that carry deoxygenated blood, and the lungs are the only tissue to receive deoxygenated blood. Then show that the lung capillary returns oxygenated blood to the heart via the pulmonary veins. 
The pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood, whereas all other veins carry deoxygenated blood. So now let's establish a concentration gradient for oxygen in the lungs. Show that during inhalation, the concentration of oxygen in the alveolar lumen is high because we breathe in oxygen-rich air. Show that the oxygen concentration in our capillary is low because most of our blood oxygen has been used in peripheral tissue. Now show that during inhalation, the carbon dioxide concentration in the alveolar lumen is low. We haven't exhaled it yet. Show that the carbon dioxide concentration in our capillary is high. Blood accumulates metabolic waste such as carbon dioxide as it circulates. Now show oxygen diffusion from the alveolar lumen across the interstitial space and into the capillary. Here hemoglobin will pick it up. Then show carbon dioxide diffusion from the capillary across the interstitial space and into the alveolar lumen. Oxygen and carbon dioxide diffuse down their concentration gradients from high to low. So now let's illustrate gas exchange in the peripheral tissues. Draw a single capillary within the peripheral tissues which are bathed in interstitial fluid just like the alveoli. Show that the heart delivers oxygenated blood to a peripheral capillary via the aorta. Show that the peripheral tissues return deoxygenated blood to the heart via the vena cava, which concludes the systemic circuit. So next, let's establish a concentration gradient for oxygen. Illustrate that the concentration of oxygen in the peripheral tissues is low because it has been consumed for metabolic functions. Show that the concentration of oxygen in the capillary is high because it has just passed through the oxygen-rich lungs. Then show that the concentration of carbon dioxide in the peripheral tissues is high because it accumulates as a metabolic byproduct. Show that the concentration of carbon dioxide in the capillary is low, again, because it's just passed through the lungs. Show oxygen diffused from the capillary to the peripheral tissues. Then show carbon dioxide diffused from the peripheral tissues to the capillary. These gases diffuse down their concentration gradients from high to low, just like in the lungs. When this blood returns to the lungs, carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood and then is exhaled. Specifically review our learning as follows. Oxygen diffuses into alveolar capillaries, and it diffuses out of the peripheral capillaries. Carbon dioxide diffuses out of the alveolar capillaries, and it diffuses into the peripheral capillaries. As a final point, consider that the concentrations of carbon dioxide and oxygen actually vary over the length of the capillary. We show a simplification of their concentrations here.